Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Cam, uh, here with my brief thoughts on Cry Macho. This was directed by Clint Eastwood, it also stars him, as well as Eduardo Minette and Dwight Yoakam. It tells the story of a man named Mike Milo, played by Eastwood. Once upon a time, he was one of the top rodeo stars and a very good horse breeder. However, through a combination of injuries and drugs, he is not that way anymore, to the point where his former boss and seemingly friend, played by Dwight Yoakam, chews him out and fires him, only to rehire him when something arises. Dwight Yoakam in this movie has a son and wants to reconnect with his son and free him from the grip of his abusive ex-wife. And so Mike goes from Texas to Mexico to fetch the son and bring him home. I have a lot of respect for Clint Eastwood both as an actor and as a director. The man is 92 and is still working on a fairly consistent basis. I've seen people say that he should retire, but honestly, I think he should do this for as long as he wants to. He could have quit and played a long time ago. His legacy is more than secure just by the Dollars Trilogy by itself. However, the fact that he still does this and actually is still pretty good at it, I think it should be commended. If you haven't seen Richard Jewell, watch it. It's underrated. I also acknowledge that Eastwood has had some duds, both from a director standpoint and an acting standpoint. I'm fully aware of movies like The 1517 to Paris and Jersey Boys. I am aware of those. No filmmaker has ever bat a thousand. However, whenever there's a new Eastwood movie, I try and go out of my way to watch it. And having seen Cry Macho, this was a bit of a mixed bag. My favorite part of the movie, and the part that kept me watching, was the chemistry between Eastwood and the and the young boy. I liked the dynamic that they had. Eastwood's character says he's gotten older fall into this bit of elderly sarcasm, if you want to call it, that is just I just find kind of endearing. There's this scene when they're in this they're in a car together driving and a context the boy carries around a chicken, or a rooster, named Macho, and explains how one time, one time Macho broke his leg, and he yelled at the, ch yelled at the rooster to, to get up and fight back, and as he's telling the story, comes to an end, and Eastwood just says, It's the most exciting thing I've ever heard. This movie honestly had a lot less action than I was anticipating. Maybe it's because of Eastwood's age, or maybe it's some other factor. But on the whole, when it was just these two actors either just sitting together and talking things out or fighting together, I thought it to be pretty riveting. Dwight Yoakam in his very few scenes is pretty good here as well. He gets one scene where it's just pretty much just all exposition to explain the relationship between he and Eastwood. And while it's pretty blatant, it gives you all the information you need to know. I like the young the young boy. I believe this actor's name is Eduardo Minette. I probably butchered that and I'm sorry, but he actually gave a pretty good performance. I hope he gets more work after this. The big problem with this movie though is the pacing. I think for the first let's say 45 minutes, it's a, it's a pretty good build up. You learn about Mike Milo's past. Mike Milo gets hired to bring the boy back, meets the boy, finds out that he's not exactly a shining example of morality, but can be can be impressed upon. You meet his mom, who is just a terrible human being. And we get our main mission to go back to, er, to get the boy across the border. Then we hit this small town. In this town... Eastwood's character meets a woman named Marta, and they fall in love, and they're basically stuck because they have car troubles. This was the point of the movie where I started to zone out. I think that, in theory, this was supposed to show that Mike was kind of shedding off a little of his gruffer exterior to try and f feel feelings that he hasn't felt for a long time. I get that, I understand the need for that, however, it could have handled 
a lot more efficiently. And also, and this is kind of a smaller problem, but it just it just kind of stuck out to me. Even though this movie takes place in 1979, there's definitely some stuff that kind of screams modern. Like, it's one of those blink and you miss it kind of things. But as Eastwood and the boy are getting away, they drive past what looks to be a pretty modern or slightly modern food truck. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, I wasn't born in the late 70s, but I'm pretty sure food trucks didn't exist back then. But at the end of the day, I did have some problems with this movie. However, I think this movie was made with a lot of tender, loving care, and I think that should be appreciated. I'm going to give this a good rating. I don't think it deserves to go any higher than that. However, it's on the stronger end of good, if that makes any sense. But that is all for me. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, stay tuned for this coming Sunday, where I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite comedies of all time, The Big Lebowski, and talking about why it's still better than you remember. But if you like this video, please be sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts down below, and if you like this video and you want to see more like it, hit the subscribe button and click the bell to allow notifications. That way, when a new video drops, you'll be the first to know about it. My name is Ryan Cam, and I'll see you in the next one.